We saw this happen in Japan in the 1990s, where they did not act boldly and swiftly enough, and as a consequence, uh, they suffered what was called the lost decade. This will never be like a Japanese fake speed. Check. It wasn't that long ago that many people in the United States were absolutely terrified that Japan was going to overtake America as the largest economy on the planet. When the Japanese stock market hit an all-time high in December 1989, even comedians like Andrew Dice Clay were freaking out over the land of the ever-rising sun. And where the Japanese coming from? What is that? Didn't we drop two bombs on them a couple years ago? What was in those bombs? Fertilizer? But of course, we know now that Japan didn't become the world's largest economy. In fact, in the early 1990s, Japan went into a prolonged economic slumber from which it's yet to fully awaken. Japan's economy hit the skids for three basic reasons, and they'll all sound familiar. That's Anthony Randazzo, a policy analyst at Reason Foundation, the nonprofit behind Reason TV. He's the co-author of a recent study and Reason Magazine cover story on Japan's lost decade. First was an overly aggressive financial sector that didn't believe that their gains would ever come down. They became euphoric with all the money they were making and became unwise in their investments. The second was monetary policy that kept interest rates low, uh, flooded the market with money, and encouraged the rise of an asset bubble. And the third was a collection of government policies, such as regulatory policy and tax structures, that encouraged an unnatural rise in the price of assets leading into their bubble. The parallels between the U.S. and Japan don't end with the causes of unsustainable economic bubbles, though. The official responses have been eerily similar as well. The first was they lent money to struggling financial institutions. The second was they propped up the so-called zombie businesses with bailouts, companies that without government support would have just gone out of business. And third was they spent the equivalent of $1.4 trillion in stimulus projects over seven years. But none of that worked in Japan. The net result? Public debt skyrocketed as a percentage of gross domestic product, and the unemployment rate doubled, which is way too close to what we're seeing in the U.S. now. So what should the Japanese government have done in the 90s? And what should the U.S. government be doing right now? There are some important things we can take away from the Japanese lost decade. We need to lower taxes for everyone, keep them low. This will give people more of their own hard-earned money and it will encourage business activity leading to economic growth. We need to stop excessive government spending that is increasing our national deficit and our national debt. And we need to let zombie businesses really go bankrupt. This will lead to some short-term economic pain, but the upside is, is long-term sustainable economic growth for all sectors of the American economy as we clear the way for better business and investment opportunities. As the President and Congress plow ahead with more spending, more regulation, more debt, and more taxes, here's hoping they look to Japan's recent past for guidance on what not to do. If they don't, they just might be creating an American lost decade. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.